The United Kingdom is weighing a significant shift in how it watches and secures the seas on its northern doorstep, exploring a tighter partnership between the Royal Air Force's protector remotely piloted aircraft and the P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol Force. The idea is simple to state and complex to deliver, marry the reach and persistence of an uncrewed, long-endurance platform with the heavyweight sensors and anti-submarine pedigree of a crewed jet, then turn that pairing into a routine, repeatable way of working. Ministers frame the work as part of translating strategic intent into executable programs through the forthcoming defense investment plan, but the operational logic is already clear. A layered, mixed fleet promises more eyes on the water for longer, faster transitions from detection to tracking, and a steadier drumbeat of presence over the North Atlantic choke points that matter most to UK security and alliance commitments. Protector, the RAF certified evolution of the MQ 9B family, has entered service as a NATO compliant platform designed to live comfortably in controlled airspace, an important bureaucratic threshold that opens doors for regular tasking from domestic bases. It brings what drones at their best always bring patience. Where a crewed aircraft is constrained by crew duty cycles and the fatigue of repeated sorties, an uncrewed aircraft can keep a sensor in the right place for the long, uneventful hours that dominate maritime surveillance. At RAF Waddington, Protector sits within a maturing ecosystem of intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance assets, ground stations and analysts, that ecosystem is crucial because the value of a persistent orbit is not simply the data it gathers but how quickly that data is fused, triaged and acted upon. On the other side of the team, the P-8A Poseidon force at RAF Lossiemouth remains the UK's prime tool for anti-submarine warfare and wide-area maritime patrol. The aircraft sensors, maritime radar, electro-optical systems and, above all, its acoustic suite with modern sonobly processing give it the ability to find, classify and prosecute undersea threats. It is also an exceptionally scarce and costly asset, with finite crews and demanding maintenance. A central promise of marrying protector with Poseidon is to stretch the most precious resource in any modern air force, time on task for high-end platforms. If a drone can shoulder the routine hold and watch functions, a Poseidon crew can concentrate on decisive tasks, dropping buoys on a promising datum, making sense of a complex acoustic picture, or sprinting to a new contact judged time critical. That division of labor is also a response to the problems of geography and tempo. The North Atlantic is vast, the weather fickle and the traffic dense. Russian submarines, renewed great power competition and a busier Arctic sea route have already pushed allies to re-examine fixed surveillance gaps and how quickly a fleeting detection can be turned into a sustained track. A concept of operations that stations protector orbits over likely transit routes, fishing grounds and approaches to critical infrastructure would create a background layer of awareness, queuing P-8s to investigate anomalies or confirm a contact. In a surge scenario, an exercise, a crisis, or the response to a suspicious undersea incident, protector orbits could be repositioned to keep constant watch on key lines of approach while Poseidon cycle through the intensive work of localization and classification. The technology to make that feasible is not science fiction, it is systems engineering and disciplined integration. Protector can carry a multi-mode maritime radar, electro-optical and infrared sensors and receivers for shipborne identification signals. Those payloads, linked over reliable satellite communications, can be fed into the same intelligence picture that Poseidon crews and maritime operations centers use. The demands are prosaic but unforgiving, assured beyond line-of-sight communications, robust deconfliction and airspace management between crewed and uncrewed orbits, common data formats so that a track started by a drone becomes, to the Poseidon crew, just another track in the mission system with a trustworthy pedigree. The benefit is cumulative. Every hour a drone quietly watches a pattern of life unfold over a patch of ocean teaches operators what normal looks like there, and makes abnormal stand out more quickly when it finally appears. Beyond the tactical mechanics, the initiative is a test of institutional agility. Moving from exploration to daily practice will touch budgets, basing, 
manning and training pipelines. It will mean deciding how much of the protector fleet's time is committed to maritime tasks versus land-centric missions, and how to grow a cadre of operators fluent in the language of the sea. It will spur investments in ground infrastructure to process higher volumes of sensor data and to host the planning and exploitation cells that turn pixels and plots into decisions. It will likely require experimentation with new tasking rhythms, for example, a guardian orbit owned by the Maritime Operations Center and RET asked dynamically to support a P-8 sortie, rather than a fixed, days in advance plan. There is also an alliance dimension that should not be underestimated. A number of close partners are heading the same way, pairing crewed maritime patrol aircraft with long-endurance uncrewed systems to blend persistence and punch. Interoperability is not just a slogan here, it is an operational multiplier. If British protector orbits can exchange cues and plots with allied drones or patrol aircraft over standardized gateways, then coalition coverage becomes more than the sum of national pieces. Conversely, Failing to align data standards and procedures risks fragmentation, where each nation's uncrib picture lives in its own silo and the burden shifts back to the crewing of high-end assets. The UK's exploration, therefore, sits within a broader NATO conversation about common architectures, shared watch bills and resilient communications under contestation. Critics will rightly point to the risk that a story of teaming becomes a euphemism for stretching fleets too thin or assuming that inexpensive flying hours can replace advanced sensors and crews. The lesson from early adopters is the opposite, uncrewed persistence amplifies, but does not substitute for, high-end capacity. A drone cannot process complex acoustic signatures like a dedicated maritime patrol crew, nor can it carry the same range of weapons or sonobles. What it can do is be present, continuously, in the right places, shaping the hunt before it even begins and sustaining contact after the crewed aircraft must depart. If that relationship is kept honest, protector as enabler, Poseidon as the decisive tool, the whole construct becomes more resilient. Cost and industrial questions will loom over the transition. Any expanded maritime role for protector has to be affordable over the long haul, mindful of the people and infrastructure needed to operate it, and coherent with domestic industry's role in sensors, integration, and data exploitation. Yet those same considerations tilt in favor of the teaming model. Every hour of maritime surveillance performed by an uncrewed aircraft is an hour of Poseidon is available for the missions only it can perform. Every investment in data fusion and ground processing pays back twice, improving both drone and patrol aircraft effectiveness. And every demonstration of reliable drone operations in crowded airspace normalizes the use of uncrewed systems for civil support tasks, from disaster response to border monitoring, further strengthening the case for a sustainable fleet. If the UK turns this exploration into doctrine, the result will be a quieter revolution than a new aircraft rollout or a major base opening. It will be visible instead in the cadence of operations, more routine orbits in the right places, faster queuing to contacts of interest, fewer gaps when the weather turns foul, and a steadier, calmer confidence in the nation's ability to keep tabs on its maritime approaches. This is the essence of modern deterrence at sea, not a single dramatic capability, but a web of sensors and platforms working in concert, making it harder for an adversary to move unseen and easier for allies to act together. Protector and Poseidon, if put to work as true partners, could weave that web tighter without breaking the bank or the crews who keep it all aloft.